welcome to August's video newsletter from the Golden Triangle Asian Elephant Foundation. This month's newsletter is going to be entirely devoted to a fundraiser that we have going on. I'm going to talk a little bit about our inspiration for the fundraiser and what you can do to help. Ever since we started the foundation in 2005 to look after captive elephants and to give a better life to street begging elephants, I've always wanted to look for a way to further conservation and to help wild elephants. One of the ways we've done this is to support ranger teams from around the world, um, mostly in places where there are wild elephants and where they work to make sure that where there is poaching, they reduce the poaching. Where there is land encroachment, they are able to stop that, so stop people taking away elephant land. And also to work with communities, so when elephants come out of the forest, the elephants and the communities are protected and as small amount of damage is done as possible when elephants come to raid crops. Throughout the pandemic, the ranger teams that we work with and those that we used to work with have all been in contact and they have told us that times have got tougher for them. As people have moved back from the cities to the countryside, as people in the countryside have lost income, there's been more pressure on the natural forest, the place where elephants and other wildlife live, as people decide that they need to take animals out of the forest to eat because they're hungry or to make some money or to try and claim some extra land so they can, uh, so they can grow more crops. Now these are all worthy causes. We, we feel sorry for the people who are in, these de in this desperate situation, but there are other ways to do it without harming the elephants. Um, another problem that all of the ranger teams have had, because a lot of them were funded either by us, who are funded by tourism, or funded in other ways by tourism, is the pandemic has stopped tourism, so a lot of the ranger teams have lost funding. The idea we came up with is something called a virtual step challenge. It's very, very easy. We had all done one through our parent company, Miner, in June. One thing rangers do a lot is walk. They patrol. They walk thousands of kilometres in a quarter. I get the reports from Cardamom Tented Camp. I know, I know how far they go. So I thought, in, in, in order to help them, what I would encourage everybody else to do is walk. So we came up with this step challenge. All you have to do is walk. Go through your normal life, register your steps at the end of the day, Upload it to a website, tiefit.com, and you'll find a position on the leaderboard. At the end of the month, we will see where everybody lies. There are prizes for the top three biggest step takers, the people who have walked, run, or crawled the furthest. But all the other prizes, and we have now $45,000 worth of prizes, generously donated by mainly hotels around the world, all the other prizes will be placed on lucky numbers up and down the leaderboard. So it doesn't matter if you don't do 20,000 steps a day, if you're only doing two or three thousand steps a day, there is a chance that you will win a prize anyway. So please do sign up. Please do go to the link on the screen. Please do give us your 800 baht or your $25. And that will go to help all the ranger teams I've mentioned, to help them protect the ecosystems. And of course, you might get a little bit fitter. I guarantee you it's great fun. And even better, you may win a great prize. We've chosen to work with five great ranger teams from mostly around Asia, but one in Tanzania. The first ranger team is Freeland Foundation in Thailand. We work with them in Khao Yai. They're community rangers down there. So their work is to keep the elephants and humans separate when the elephants come out of the park. They move the elephants back into the park without increasing the stress of the elephants, keeping both people and elephants safe. There is some loss of crops and their other work is to work with the farmers to say, okay, you've lost some crops, but it's worth it for having nature on your back door. And they're looking for alternative crops. They're looking into, when, po when COVID leaves, they're looking into community-based tourism as well and wildlife-based tourism. So the first one is Freeland. Freeland also helped train Department of National Park Rangers all the way across Thailand for the, for the trickier task of actual anti-poaching. Um, sometimes against elephants, a lot against rosewood. Uh, they are the people who train the law enforcement, the crime scene investigation and all of those other things to make sure that when a poaching event does happen, the rangers for the, of the Department of National Parks are able to see the scene, keep the evidence, most importantly are able to track down and catch the perpetrators. So that's the first ranger team. The second ranger team are Wildlife Alliance, um, who have long been our partners in, in Cambodia. They look after the Southern Cardamom National Park, a massive area of standing forest. It takes half an hour to fly over it in a helicopter if you're lucky enough to be able to do that, as I have been. Fantastic, beautiful wilderness. You can go and visit it at Chi Pat, a community tourism area. Um, and that's about the only place you can get in, apart from our own Cardamom and Pentecamp, which I will get back to later. 
they work very, very hard on law enforcement. They're patrolling constantly. Uh, land encroachment is a big problem. People are cutting down trees. People are moving into the elephant territory. And so they are responsible for this massive area of standing forest in Cambodia, probably the largest standing rainforest anywhere in Asia. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful territory. And obviously, as with us all, they are totally always in need of funds. So that is the second ranger team, Wildlife Alliance from Cambodia. The third ranger team is the Masungi Geo Reserve in the Philippines. They've been our elephant experts, even though there are no elephants there. They've come on and given us a lecture about the work they do, they do there, protecting a massive watershed that ultimately is responsible for Manila's water supply. They are a very, very dedicated team. Um, unfortunately, their problem there is the same as everywhere else, land encroachment. And there they are not government, so they are unable to carry weapons, but they are also being shot at all the time. They're a very, very brave team of rangers. Um, we love their work. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to go and visit it. There is a tourism way you can go. There are some prizes there. You could win a trip to the Masungi Jira Reserve. Some of the things you can do when you're there, you can walk across their spider webs, you can go across their bridges, and all the time you learn about nature and you learn why the, the watershed and why the limestone ecosystem is so important, not only to the, the animals and the uh, flora that live there, but also to anything living in that watershed, because that's where the water is stored and that's where that goes down. So that's the third ranger team. The fourth is Honey Guide in Tanzania. It's called the Randlin Wildlife Management Area. Uh, it is an essential elephant expansion zone for Tarangiri National Park in Tanzania. Um, one of the best elephant hotspots anywhere in East Africa. Uh, and elephants, during the dry season, they move into the park and they hang around by the rivers and they use the water sources. During the wet season, they will spread out and they need these expansion zones. And Randallin is a community owned area of land that has been leased, it's community run, but it has been leased across to allow for wildlife. So there's no grazing allowed in there. The funding comes usually from tourism mainly. And during the tourism times, funding goes to the, flows to the outside villages. So the villagers see the sense in not harming the wildlife. First of all, not hunting it, but secondly, if elephants come and raid crops, to, to not harming the elephants, to moving them away gently. So the fourth ranger team, the one we're supporting, is the is Honey Guide Foundation on Randallin Wildlife Management Area in Tanzania. The fifth and final ranger team that we're raising funds for are the ones closest to my heart. They are our very own Wildlife Alliance rangers who patrol the 18,000 hectares of standing forest that um, our parent and supporting company, Minor International, pay the lease for, surrounding Cardamom Tented Camp, which outside COVID you can go and visit and it is a prize here on the run walk call for rangers. Um, I've known this piece of land since 2012. We finally got the rangers on there by 2014 and our foundation have funded them ever since. The constant battle that our rangers have had for the last two years um, since COVID struck of people trying to take little bits of land, maybe a hectare here, a hectare there, but every hectare you allow, another hectare will come in the next six months and another hectare will come in the next six months. And every time you have someone living within a protected area, they will be going out bushmeat hunting and everything else. So we've been very, very clear where our boundaries are. And so far, our rangers have been able to, through massive, massive patrolling effort, have been able to keep the encroachment down to stop any encroachment at all are still out there pulling up snares from bushmeat hunters, are still out there stopping people poaching hardwoods or people poaching herbs from the forest and preventing any other form of poaching as well. So we've still got them going, their spirits are still high. We need to continue this until, until well, we need to continue this, otherwise the forest will definitely disappear. And so that is our fifth ranger team. They are who we are supporting through this effort.